So this wave function, which is something we have discussed before in Unit 4, the idea of a wave like this, a sine wave, representing a rotating object going around anticlockwise like that. So at a given time, t, the object might have reached this point, and the sine wave is saying how far have we gone up this axis. Uh, so we might have reached that point. So by the time it reaches here, we reach the maximum point, which is this point here, and so on, back down to zero. And so we have this wave-like action called a sine wave, and it represents how far something's moving along a particular axis with time. So we're only interested in that axis, which might, might represent distance, displacement, S for displacement in metres, or it might represent voltage, or it might represent current. And so we have this rotation. Uh, what is this representing here? Can you remember from last year? Angular velocity, George, right. Then symbol, what's the name for the symbol? Omega represents the angular velocity. The rate at which this thing's rotating. Measured in radians per second. So we measure angles in radians, if you remember from last year. We have a relation between the angular velocity and the frequency, where the frequency is the number of rotations per second. So if it does one complete rotation from here, right round and back to here again, then that's in one second, then the frequency is one cycle per second. And this is, isn't it, one cycle. Okay. So we have a relationship between angular velocity and the frequency. Why 2 pi times the frequency? And what is special, but what is 2 pi in terms of a circle? What does 2 pi tell us? Right, it's a complete turn. 2 pi in radians represents 360 degrees, a complete turn. So if we think about it, the angular velocity is the angle one complete turn, 2 pi, times the number of times it does that in a second, the frequency. So that's where this comes from. So we have this wave that can represent a rotation. And so we, we end up with a wave equation, or a wave function. S, in this particular case, the displacement, can be represented by A sine omega t where omega is the angular velocity and t is the time. We can add a phase difference. And we add that phase difference if the thing doesn't start at zero. If we look at this for a second, if t equals zero, if the time equals zero, then it doesn't matter what omega is, omega t is zero gone. And so the sign of zero is zero. That means it's starting there at the beginning. Or if we look at this uh, sine wave up here, it's starting at the top. I, sorry, at the bottom there, in other words. If it doesn't start at that point, then this whole wave, and I can see if I can get it to do this, this whole wave might shift that way. So if it was starting a bit earlier, it would be shifted this way which is a bit counterintuitive, actually. If I said the waves advanced a bit, you would Im imagine it moving that way, but in fact, it moves that way because it's starting earlier. Remember, this represents time here, so the wave's starting earlier. In other words, it might be in this position at the start, not at zero. And so we can add this phase to represent that, this phase shift, so that at time zero, the angle is already at phi, whatever the angle is. That is the wave function that you need to be able to sort of understand. So we need to talk about what each of these things represent. For the purposes of the assignment, we're not going to consider a phase shift, which is why I put that in a different colour. But it does exist and you will come across it. A represents the amplitude of the function. The maximum point at which it 
uh, th that it reaches the maximum point. Omega, as we've said already, is the angular velocity. And because the angular velocity equals 2 pi f, we can write this. Plus phi, if we wanted to. But often the phase angle is zero, so we could write that. Because omega equals 2 pi f. So replace the omega here with 2 pi f. Let's have a look at a wave and try and sketch it, which is the sort of thing you're going to be asked to do in the assignment. So let's look at an example, e.g. S equals 3 sine um, 4 pi t. And I want to sketch that wave. From this information here, I can actually go quite a long way towards sketching what this wave will look like. So let's sketch it underneath. Not a very good line, but never mind. We know the phase is zero, so that it starts at zero, and all your examples will start at zero. So I know it's going to start at zero, and I know it's going to look like that, that red line. Can I put any numbers on here? Can I put any values on? And that's what I need, what we need to think about. This allows me to, to put some values on the wave. Okay. Right. The first thing is, Jack, that the peak, the amplitude is 3, so therefore that means this point here must be 3. So if this was displacement measured in metres, I'm saying that the maximum displacement of this thing is 3 metres. So that's the first thing I can put on it. The second thing I can do is to write down what this is. I can calculate this point. Can you remember from last year what we call the time to reach this point? It's called the period of the wave, if you remember. Capital T for period. And there's a relationship between the period of the wave and the frequency. If the frequency was 2, for example, yeah, if the, period, if the frequency was 2, that means 2 cycles per second. So how long for it to go what, one complete turn? If the frequency is 2, how long for one turn? Half a second. If the frequency is 3, how long for one turn? A third of a second. In other words, the period equals... 1 over the frequency. So if I know the frequency, I can work out what the period is. And the period is that point here. So I can mark what that is on the wave function, the time it takes to go one revolution. If I was looking at a wave, let's say this is a voltage or a current, and I was looking at a wave on an oscilloscope, I'd be interested in this point too. Because it would tell me, well, first of all, this would tell me the maximum voltage is 3 volts. And then this would allow me to work out the period, to say what the period was. And if I knew the period, I could calculate the frequency, which I'm often interested in. So this is a crucial point in a wave, the time to get one revolution. If we look at our wave, we can work out what that is. This is the important information here. Because remember, that is omega. That whole bit there is omega. But omega is 2 pi f. <laughs> so if I want to get the frequency, that's going to be omega divided by 2 pi. So that's an important little equation. 
If I want to find out what the frequency of my wave is, I just divide the angular velocity, and this is the angular velocity here, by 2 pi. So for this particular example, this particular example here, the frequency equals the omega, which is 4 pi, over 2 pi, which is 2. Okay. Look at that. If I want to know what the frequency of the wave is, because I need that to calculate this point, the period, to get, the free, to get this point, I need the frequency. What is the frequency? It's whatever the angular velocity is, divided by 2 pi. In other words, in this case, 4 pi, divided by 2 pi, which is 2. So the frequency is 2 hertz. If I know the frequency, I can find the period, because the period is 1 over the frequency. So for this particular example, 1 over 2, half a second. So I can say that this point here is 0 0.5 seconds. And I can mark it on the sketch. The period is 0 0.5 seconds. If this had been an oscilloscope, and I'd measured from my oscilloscope that this was 0 0.5, then I could work backwards and say, ah, that means the frequency is 2 hertz and the angular velocity is 4 pi. Voltage, which is a time-dependent um, voltage. So this actually, I should really write this. Small v. Okay, what I want you to do, and I'm just going to pause this video here, is for you to sketch that wave. When I say sketch the wave, I mean sketch what it looks like. That's easy because it's a sine wave. And then put important points on, and there's really only two I can write. One is the amplitude, one is the period. So sketch that wave for that wave function. Okay, let's look at it. I might have been asked to sketch three waves, three complete cycles. Well, I know what that looks like. That's one, two, three. So that's three complete cycles. Time along here in seconds, say. And this now represents voltage in seconds. Can I mark any points on here, Jordan? I'll give you the easy one. The peak, which is? Right, I know that's 240 volts. The peak. The bit slightly more awkward thing now is to work out what that point there is, the period, in other words. So I look at this. That's omega. So what do I do with that? Divide it by 2 pi. So the frequency equals 200 pi divided by 2 pi, we often write down the angular velocity in terms of pi so that we can then cancel it out to get the frequency. So 200 divided by 2 is 100, so the frequency is 100 hertz. Is that what I put on the sketch? No. I want the period. How do I get the period? Right. The period it's 1 over this, 1 over 100, or 0 0.01 seconds. So I'd mark this as 0 0.01. Done. Okay? Okay, I'll stop that here.